Let's, let's dissect the package. Looks like the shipping company already did. God damn. Yes, check this out. Ultra high speed 3D printing. I'm pretty sure they market this as one of, if not the fastest 3D printer on the market right now. We're gonna test that. Glass, but you can't break them. Look at the inches. Impossible. Is that the kind of screens we get to play with now? Good Gandhi. All right, so it was pretty much three steps in the calibration that you had to do. If you don't read the manual, you're gonna miss it. I know a lot of you don't, so maybe they should just have it in default when you start the printer. There should just be a calibration program that you have to go through. Okay, allegedly the fastest printer on the market. Let's see how fast it can do a Benchy. Okay, here we go. Just eight minutes. It's not pretty, not even a little. I wouldn't even call it usable, but hey, it's a sub 10 minute Benchy. Every single one on YouTube I've seen have been very distorted. This one is as well, but this is one of the better sub 10 minute Benchies I've seen. Oh, K2 plus combo next up on the chopping block. Pumped up version of the K1 Max. It's larger and it offers multi-color printing. I remember trying multi-colored 3D printers four or five years ago. The workflow was awful. Hopefully they have fixed that since then. <sighs> this glass fiber reinforced tape constantly leaves, look, leaves a bunch of adhesive left for you to clean up. No way, they didn't fix the hinges. And by far the lightest of them all, the X1C Carbon Comp, that was a lot of Cs. It's a printer from Bamboo Lab, highly requested. In the previous video, basically every comment was about getting a Bamboo Lab. Just get one, you're not gonna regret it. So we'll see what's in the box. Tape that doesn't leave any residue, I appreciate that. Okay, so just like in the K2 Plus, they're really smart with shipping, so they don't use separate boxes anymore. They simply take everything in the printer. Genius. I would say all three printers have had pretty much impeccable shipping. Five, six years ago, you would get a box that had been shooed by a dog, but now it's, it's all very neatly packaged. It's really good. Okay, so it's doing the calibration, you guys. It was the first thing that came up. I clicked one button. I think it will do the entire sequence. Let's see. Sure thing, in about 15 minutes of the user not having to do anything except loading filament, it was ready to be used. Okay, let's do a 25 minute Benchy and compare it to the eight minute one and see if it's any better. Okay, it's doing all kinds of things. It literally did a first layer just to inspect it. It stopped and inspect if the first layer was fine. Okay, right away I can tell you this is top tier Benchy territory. But there is this one line that kind of ruins it. Let's see if it will focus. There's this one line right there. Everything else, pretty much picture perfect in my opinion. Oh yeah, great example for when size mm, actually matters. I need to print a couple of parts for a different video and the Ethel Sun and the Bab is not big enough to print those two parts in just one go. The K2 Plus is actually large enough to do it. So I have a few things yet to assemble, like the screen and a few things. I'm not gonna use the CFS system for these two prints, but let's just get it running and uh, see how it works. I'm happy to see this, a much better placement for the spool holder than having it on the back panel, just like the K1 Max did, because it adds even more depth to an already very large printer. So you don't have to turn the entire printer. You have it on the side and you can do everything from the front by pulling the filament through. Way better. The calibration processes has been super easy on the other two printers. So I hope Creality really has done some good things here. They call it self-check. It's supposed to take 16 minutes. Let's do it. Yeah, same here. These self-checks are getting so good, you just load the filament, it's effortless. Let's make another bench. It's supposed to take just 14 minutes, so then we can compare them between all three printers. Well, that's 14 minutes. 
What you're seeing right now is my absolute disbelief. A banshee that used to take an hour, just a few years ago, done in 14 minutes. It was not as fast as the Eiffel Sun, but it was faster than the Bamboo Lab, and it looks absolutely picture perfect. This is by far the nicest banshee of them all. It is pristine. It is perfect. I couldn't just let the S1 Pro rip out an 8 minute Benchy looking like hot garbage without testing the speed quality ratio. So here's what I did. I dropped the print time in 2 minute intervals to see exactly when the cooling taps out. The 12 minute Benchy was a clear winner here. Anything less and you start to see wavy patterns and really poor overhang. Okay you guys, we got the fastest possible settings locked in on the Bamboo Lab. For reference, 12 minutes for the S1 Pro to make a good looking Benchy, 14 minutes to make a phenomenal Benchy for the K2 Plus. Let's see what the Bamboo Lab can do with the fastest possible settings. Start the timer. On the screen of the X1C, you can adjust the speed to what they call sport or ludicrous mode. Of course, for this one, we got the highest speed setting possible, but more about that later. I'm gonna have to see in the video how long that took, but that's a good looking Benchy. The green 25 minute Benchy, yeah not bad, even the text is clearly readable. The 15 minute Benchy has some clear temperature lines, but still top tier I would say. Okay, here we go, each one of them loaded up with default settings provided by the supplier. The filament isn't the exact same on all three printers, but sue me. Okay, the S1 Pro is going, so I'm starting the timer. On this first run, notice how the K2 doesn't stop for the spaghetti, even though the AI is on and totally should stop. Added a brim and that seemed to have solved the issue. This is the speed you can expect from all three printers right out of the box with the recommended settings. 1 hour 28, 240 and 153. With default settings, fully stock, no mods, the S1 Pro came on top. K2 Plus came in second. I think all three printers have done a really good job with the layer lines. It's hard to differentiate between the three. Yeah, you're right. Let's do something a little harder. So I decided to throw the Notre Dame model on all three. Default settings, same size. This is one of the greatest models, but also one of the hardest to get clean looking. Oh yeah, keep in mind, this is a print that would take at least 30 hours just a few years ago. And now we're popping them out like Tic Tacs. Quite a disappointment you guys, not gonna lie. Hopefully it's just wrong settings because this took 10 hours. This 15, we're up to 19 hours and it's still not done. Hopefully I can fix it with other settings. Let's try it again. Time to swap filaments. 62 seconds for the S1 Pro, 78 seconds for the Bamboo, and 102 seconds for the K2 Plus. The 14 minute Benchy we did on the Creality K2 Plus turned out freaking amazing. Stole the settings and applied to this next set of Notre Dame models I wanna do before we start to criticize these. Let's do another set of three in different colors and uh, let's see how fast they really are. Oh yeah, now everything changed. The K2 sailed through the Notre Dame print. It finished the same time as the S1 Pro at just over 10 hours. The Bamboo, even at ludicrous speed mode, took a little longer at a shy 13 hours. Okay, now check this out. The first model that came off the K2 Plus, it took almost 20 hours, way slower, but this quality is insane. Best Notre Dame I've ever printed, hands down. I don't doubt the Bamboo Lab X1C can pull this off. The S1 Pro, I don't think so. Bamboo was faster and it still looked really good, but you know the most surprising thing here is? The S1 Pro is just 10 hours holding up this well. Side by side you can really see how much the speed impacts quality. Now jumping over to the colored prints, they are way more comparable. Honestly, they all look about the same. Maybe the bamboo edges out a little here, but with those extra couple of hours it's hard to say. But still, I gotta emphasize just how wild it is that we're talking about a 12 hour print for a model like this, let alone 10 hours, it's insane. Everything was going really well, then the S1 decided to do this. Oh man, this sucks so much. Just look at it. What the heck? That's so weird, that even happened. I'm 99% sure I checked all the boxes for the detection. Yeah, AI, filament detection on, clog is on. Smart printer, my ass. You do in fact get some spare parts with S1 Pro and that's great, this is a new hot end. Now this is the old one. You see that cylinder shaped thing on top? Yeah, that's now stuck up here, which means I have to replace probably the entire extruder. That's it for the S1 Pro. Now luckily for this video, I do have an exact same. Oh yeah, there was no way to get the hardened out without destroying this rubber, but this was not within the spare parts, so I, fuck. The smart functions of the S1 Pro, yeah, they have some work to do. On the Bamboo Lab, however, I found a setting yesterday, you can actually exclude parts 
while it's printing. I'll show you that in just a second. But let's see what happens if we just remove one of the parts. Oh, okay, so it just started to print on it. It was a little unfortunate. The sensitivity of the AI monitoring is set to medium. Let's increase it to high and see what happens. Okay, now it stopped. Spaghetti defects. And you can resume it too. You don't have to discard of the print. You can simply click resume. So set that to high. That would probably be your best bet so you don't meet the same fate as the S1 Pro. Aluminium motor mounts for our larger drone are precisely the type of parts that PCBWay can make. All you have to do is upload your file and it will provide you with materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing, it's in their name, and with their instant quote feature you will get their pricing up front, which is really appreciated. For the past years I've mainly used their 3D printing and CNC service, but check out their website in the description below to find out what parts they can make you. Okay, so let's try to exclude. We go in here and we exclude this portion. Skip objects. There we go. Skipping one object, this action cannot be undone. Yes, let's go. And hopefully we'll see how it doesn't jump to the fourth cylinder. It should now, yeah, it skipped it, perfect. Okay, the AI safety system is set to high. Let's see how long time it takes. It shouldn't take long. I did put it to high on this one as well. We did have a misprint in the beginning of the video and it did the exact same thing. I mean, look at this. Ah, uh, no bueno. Okay, I would say the AI detection on the K2 Plus is non-existent. I mean, if it doesn't stop for this, it won't stop for anything. So. Yeah, that's something that can be fixed with firmware, which is great, so you don't have to buy a new printer for this to work. You, Creality could simply update the firmware to make it more sensitive. It just doesn't work. Oh, dude, just as I stopped recording, it actually did stop. And a print quality issue has been detected and printing has been paused, okay? This was a little more than I would have liked, but... Okay, testing the AI detection on the S1 Pro. Oh, spaghetti detected printing past. No way. How come it didn't do that before? So what, in the end, the AI detection did in fact work on all three. Am I gonna pass the S1 Pro? I cannot possibly do that. When I needed it the most, it didn't work. So what I like with the X1C and the K2 Plus is the fact that you can change the sensitivity levels. On the S1 Pro, it's just on or off. On these two, you can change them. And it did work on these two printers all the time. It didn't work on the S1 Pro all the time. So I'm gonna give a pass to these two and a uh, fail on, is it fail correct? Now when testing the startup sequence, both the K2 and Bamboo do multiple checks to make sure everything is okay. Things like bed leveling. The Bamboo takes about eight minutes and the K2 even longer at 11 minutes, ridiculous. Meanwhile, the S1, it pretty much just heats up and goes, which in hindsight might actually be why it ended up with some plastic building up on the nozzle and well, led to this. The S1 Pro was also the loudest at 54.3 decibels average. They are all running full speed and all fans are active. That put the Bamboo in second with 51 average and the K2 Plus at only 47. It is really quiet. And let me tell you, the K2 Plus is significantly quieter. It's not even close. Decibel numbers are somewhat deceptive. I would say the perceived loudness is only about 50% of the jet engine that is the S1 Pro. I can't believe they market this as a quiet machine. Maybe quieter doesn't actually mean quiet. Six years ago, we did a dual colored print and it turned out great. It took 110 hours to print, but it turned out pretty well. Now we have the AMS and the, C the CFS and the AMS system, which is gonna make, well, supposed to make multicolored printing a lot better. You have probably seen some bamboo time lapses of multicolored prints seamlessly just print without any stops. Yeah, actually it's complete bullshit. This is what it would look like with the camera on the side. The built-in camera edits all the stops out. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, it took nine hours to print. Well, let's go and check this out. Wow, that could be one of the best multicolored prints I've ever done. 
Good job, Bamboo. That's impressive. Oh, wait. What's that? A little prime tower. Oh, so innocent. That's not a lot of plastic. That's actually really impressive. Oh. The poop. Oh yeah, I forgot about the poop. Yeah, running four colors means on some layers it will have to swap colors four times. Each swap of filament takes about a minute. Now you see why it takes 36 times longer time to print a multicolor print than just with one filament, with one color. Oh yeah, let's talk about waste. Over 100 grams of wasted filament for a 12 gram model. Now, to be fair, if you loaded up the build plate with 10 Benjis, it would still be the same amount of wasted plastic. So it really benefits you to do a lot of prints at the same time when doing multicolor. But you know, for these small four color prints, absolute worst case scenario. Both the Bamboo and the K2 supports up to four CFS or AMS systems. Now I just want to see someone do 16 colors on one single print and see how long time it takes. After using both, I have to say the Bamboo was far more reliable. The Creality system kept throwing errors in my face, mainly filament retraction failures, but weirdly just hitting retry would get it going again for a few layers before throwing the same error. Eventually it would stop doing that, but super annoying, but yeah, maybe not a deal breaker. That said, for prints like these thin flags, both the K2 and the Bamboo did a fantastic job. They look amazing. Honestly, I probably won't be using multicolored printing much myself. Like a lot of people, I'll probably use it just for filament storage, being able to automatically have four different colors of filament very conveniently to my disposal is probably a way better use of the AMS and the CF CFS and the AM. Now down here, you have a speed setting that you can change to silent that will slow down the print and make it even more silent. You also have sport and ludicrous mode. For this print particularly, I need strength, so I think sport mode is just fine. If you look at ludicrous mode, inside the print, it's not gonna be as nice infill and it might not be as strong. But you can change the speed on the Delta S1 Pro and the K2 Plus as well. Now, all three of these printers are priced about the same. So, gun to my head, which one would I pick? Well, I didn't even realize just how much I had been printing with the S1 Pro until I went back and watched all the time lapses, just print after print after, it just kept pushing them out. Well, not that I didn't use the Bamboo Lab or the K2 Plus, that's not the case at all, I used them quite a bit. But by default, for the past couple of months, it's totally been the big guy over there. Okay, so here's my deal with the S1 Pro. Well, it starts up in just a minute, I love that. More often than not, it's the fastest out of the three. When you just want your print, don't care too much about squeezing out the absolute best quality, it's hard to beat. Now that said, the S1 is the only printer that messed up in this video. Dollar for dollar, you get way more printer with the K2 Plus over the Bamboo. I mean, just the size difference alone is nuts. But at the same time, I agree with all the comments you said about Bamboo. It just feels quality. Everything works so well. If I had to sum up the Bamboo with just one word, totally reliable. Well, that was a lot in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon. Bye. And once again, the camera is really far away, so it's going to be quite a walk. All right.